All right, we are live back here in the uh, in the movie library tonight, and it has been one heck of a day. We went out this morning to uh, pick up some like some fall stuff and you know, some more clothes and stuff like that. And because we're, we're, the place where I work is kind of like really casual and laid back, for me, I need some new t-shirts. Because um, you know me, guys. Every time I come on here, there's there's always t-shirts. <clears throat> there's t-shirts to be had. <clears throat> so this time, I've got a new Jaws shirt because I, I love that film and I got like a white one I want to get one in uh in the gray color <clears throat> there was a different like like a uh, picture one uh, but I uh unfortunately that was too small for me anyway so I went out to uh, go and do that and we stopped by our local Atomic Records now Atomic Records is a uh, is a record shop they have like uh, retro gaming stuff uh like ton of Funkos they have like a bunch of stuff um, they have a ton of like movies and video games and like all generations. So we're not talking just like PS4 and Xbox One. We're talking like like Sega, Nintendo, SNES. Sometimes I've like uh, yeah like an Atari there before, and they'll even have the Retrons and stuff like that as well. So <clears throat> every so often they'll they'll do this like random surprise sale, and it's called a crate digger sale. Now what a crate digger sale is is that they'll take like some stuff you've had for a while or maybe some stuff that's in the back that we haven't seen, and they'll put it out in the front like right out in the uh, right outside the doors and uh, it, it the movies are all a dollar each so it doesn't matter if it's a box set hey cinema dave <clears throat> doesn't matter if it's like uh you know it's a series whatever it's all gonna be five bucks uh, so today i actually i grabbed a few things and when i did i grabbed some things that completed some things from my one thing that i been looking for for over five or six years and another one that goes back even further than that <clears throat> Now, we'll start with that because I think it's kind of fun. We're going to talk about other things as well on here, but I'll go through the this stuff first. Now, first, well, I got a couple of free things. Um, happy 50th Scooby-Doo, by the way. Scooby-Doo's 50th was on Friday the 13th. Um, and we are huge Scooby fans. I was actually going to do like a Scooby-centric video. So we got some Scooby stuff. Like there were, there were a buck each. And we still got to get the old price takes off from before. Um, but everything was a dollar each. But we looked at a couple of them and... Uh, there are a few there that like uh, need to be resurfaced and stuff, so we like he did that, and uh, we got some of them for. Uh, so he threw in a couple things for free. Oh, uh, hey, welcome, Indy. Did you order the? You, you're getting the vinegar shirt in October package, right? Isn't that awesome? So we grabbed this one. Well, we got this one for free, even though uh, Scooby Snacks, <laughs> even though the because uh, basically I'll show you why I guess. So this is Scooby and the Circus Monsters. So this is basically just one of those like that they randomly put out, like Walmart, some places like that, with like, hey, Tensei Pop Star, with uh, three or four, uh, like, uh, <laughs> with three or four like uh, things on it. But if you can see here, it kind of looks like there's a crack. There might be a crack in that. See it? See that? Does that look like a crack to you? So obviously, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to pay for something with a crack. So he told me, you know, take it. It's free. If he ever finds, like, like the uh, one of them without the crack, you know, <clears throat> you'll replace it. If not, you know, then I, I got it here. And when I find another one, I got the I got the artwork just in case if I buy one at a, at a yard sale or something like that. And the artwork <laughs> isn't as good. I'm actually going to talk with them in a couple minutes. I'm actually really excited about the Anvil set. Um, I was surprised at first. I'm excited about the Anvil set. I'm, I'm kind of excited about Unmasked 25, which was one I was least excited about first. Uh, very excited to see Berserker, which I don't know anything about. Oh, wow. <clears throat> I got you away from Logan O'Hara. Uh, I, I, am, I am suitably impressed. That's a fantastic movie. So... I'm a big Trace Almond fan from back in the days when, you know, The Simpsons was on it. So this was an, an, another show she did. I didn't see it. Uh, but I like her, and uh, I love the song she did. They said they don't have the rights to it. Uh, the, uh, like, Don DeDis thought they did, because they were told they did. <clears throat> really? That was one. Look back. If, I don't know if you've, like, collected horror magazines back to the Andy. But uh, look back at, like, earlier Gore Zones and stuff like that. You'll, you'll find it all over the place on those. So we opened it up, and we were <clears throat> bummed because the first disc was missing. So half the season, not here. That is a fantastic film. 
but the second half of the season was here and the bonus disc was here. So he said, you know, take it anyway. There's nothing you can do with it. So that was free. So now that we're the free stuff, you want to get into something that was kind of cool. I want to do a kind of a, I want to throw back. <clears throat> I'll give you like a really good throwback here. Any ideas for 4K Blu-rays to purchase? Actually, stack money. I got, uh, I do. And uh, stay tuned. But uh, right off the bat, uh, John Wick, really good. Uh, Halloween, the original 1978 one. Hey, Milwaukee, welcome. You'll, you'll find it on there. Yeah, trust me. And even as soon as you go look at the back of the of the slipcover for Unmasked 25, it, it'll probably ring some bells for you. Uh, I'm not joking. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, Christine's actually pretty good. And uh, the Nolan stuff, a lot of the Nolan stuff is excellent. Okay. And I'll get into it a little bit more. Remind me, and I'll look over there afterwards, and I'll, and I'll find some ideas for your stack. And thanks for all the comments, by the way. So, a few years back, when I was in St. John's, long before I came here, I, uh, I went to my value village. I, I was going to school for business. I was getting a business degree. And I used to go on my break, 4K Christine. Excellent. So I picked up this set. I was excited. I'm a huge Betty Davis fan. I found this set, right? Now, this, I'm going to let you look for a second here. So this, this is what, this, these are the movies for the set. Okay. Okay. Eagle Eye viewers for a second. And now look here. And tell me if you notice something. Hey, George, welcome, dude. That kind of stands out. I'm going to give you a second to see if you can find it. Did you notice? Do you know what? The way I said that, I felt like one of those like kind of like Blue's Clues type of things. Uh, <laughs> I did. I felt like, so. <clears throat> Did you see what blues? <laughs> did you get Blue's Clue? Well, if you didn't notice, uh, neither did I when I picked it up. What was inside of it there was this movie right here, Icons of Screwball Comedy. I was super excited to have it. Uh, it's a great little set, and uh, it was it's not a cheap one. It was put up by Columbia with four films on it. But what was missing was whatever happened to baby jane so there was like a two disc edition whatever happened to baby jane that came out um that was supposed to be in this bag <laughs> lord well you were right you had the right movie were was supposed to be in this set so right now guys for the first time here on camera There we go. I now have the complete Betty Davis Collection Volume 2, which was missing Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. I kept saying, I got to pick this up. I got to pick it up. And I said, no, if I'm going to buy it, like, edit out, go to Amazon or something, I'm going to, like, pick up the Blu-ray or something like that. But I'm going to wait until I can go out and I can find one. Uh, there's some good Mamro sets out there. Uh, I'm a Mamro fan. Uh, until I can find one for a, for a cheap price. Uh, feeling a lot better now than I was. I'll be honest with you. Earlier on today, I had to do the litter. And it was not a nice time. It was not a nice time. <laughs> okay, so I've, I've completed my Betty Davis collection, Volume 2, after like six or seven years. So I've had there, that there for six or seven years with that All Kinds of Comedy one in there, which is probably, honestly, it's probably worth more than the Betty Davis set altogether. But still. That just goes to show you guys. You know, be, you never know when you're going to find the movie that you've been looking for. Now, I have my phone plugged in, by the way. That's why I missed some of your messages, just so that uh, if you know that I, I'm not ignoring uh, you, I just had to make sure that my phone was uh, was charged before I actually brought it over. Don't look now. Oh, that's good. So you, great, great ideas here, guys. So our movie's good in Morocco. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, there's fan some fantastic movies in Morocco. When... Uh, are you talking about movies like made in Morocco or like movies like done like that I buy in Morocco? Like over there, uh, like if you know French, for instance, uh, you're you're so f like I can't wait to learn French because I've been wanting to see watch 
like get get the DVD for Necronomicon for a long time. <laughs> hey, Corey. Um, so uh, that's over there in France, uh, over there because Mor Morocco gets their stuff from like usually from from France, um, and so there's a, a lot of stuff there that we don't have over here. Paris is is I, I can't say, I haven't been there. But my better half spent a lot of time in Paris, especially when she was younger. Her sister lives there. She's an architect in uh, Paris, actually. And uh, she uh, she loves it there. You know, we'll probably, once we, her cousin lives in London. So we're, when we go to visit her cousin next time, we'll probably go over to Paris and visit her sister as well. Her uncle has like a little house there that you, uh, that people stay at when they want to go uh, visit, like a little villa. <clears throat> Tonight, Corey, I got, I got some movies. I'm going to be talking about some horror stuff. Somebody asked me about 4K stuff, uh, which I'm going to talk about as well. And uh, but I picked up some stuff today, some stuff that I uh, not a lot of horror stuff, but there's some horror stuff here. I picked up some Scooby stuff, so that's kind of horror. Let's be honest, guys. For a lot of us here growing up, hey Amy, there we go. Um, for a lot of us, Scooby was that was that gateway drug into like horror. Uh, like even before we found like stuff like The Gate or or movies like that, you know, like or Monster Squad. Scooby was the, was the one that, that showed us our showed us our monsters. Um, well, for me, anyway, Scooby was one of the things that showed us the monsters. Oh, the movie stores, uh, well, they got, like, places, like, like kind of like HMV, but there's, like, another name for them. Uh, now, there's, like, you, there's a place where you can go get, like, not-so-legit copies of films, uh, like in Medina's and stuff like that. But you, but you don't want to do that because you're never sure what you're going to get. But, uh, no, there's some really great stores. There's a really great one in the Casablanca Mall, which is amazing. Uh, now, as for movies, like, made in Morocco, there's some really great films that were made there. When we had our, uh, our commitment ceremony, um, there was a, there's a movie called Horses, Horses God. And, uh, oh, nice. And uh, it was directed, it was written by, well, the book is based on a, a book written by my, my better half, her, her uncle. And uh, the uh, director of the film actually was at, was at our commitment ceremony. So uh, I guess it's, uh, you know. Which Scooby episode? You want the alien in the old Air Force? So, I got some Scooby stuff here. I'll show you that first before going any farther. All right. So, these all got like stickers on them, but they're all like a dollar each. <clears throat> so, I picked up, uh, I got a, a pup named Scooby Doo, of volume four. And I really like a pup named Scooby Doo. I should take these stickers off them, actually. I hate these things. I'll, I'll take them off later on. Um, there are like just four episodes on this. I'm gonna pick up like the season sets. Uh, but but be honest, I'll uh, I'll still I'll still keep these because I like the artwork on the co the cover artwork and stuff like that. So once I pick up season sets, I'll just uh, eventually like see when I can find like the the volumes cheap. I'll get those as well. It's, I know it's doubling over, but I actually really like the uh, Scooby stuff. Next was Scooby-Doo and the Legend of the Vampire, which I did not know existed until I was watching Dr. Woofula. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. Really good one, actually. Scooby-Doo and the Arabian Nights. The one the speech, I mean, it should be. I mean, that, that's the one. Oh, that brings me back to Blockbuster, Tennessee. Um, the first time I saw that spear, that uh, Phantasm spear, was a Blockbuster. Merry Scary Holiday, which is What's New Scooby-Doo Volume 4. So I don't have this one, but I do have some uh, What's New Scooby-Doo, so I am actually kind of might have that one. And of course, for all you wrestling fans out there, Scooby-Doo WrestleMania Mystery. Now, there's actually two Scooby-Doo Wrestling Mysteries. I'm not joking. There's two of these. Uh, but uh, that's the first one. So that's some Scooby that I got to add to my collection now. And I have a An incredible Scooby collection. I don't have that one yet, Charles. Uh, that one's on our list, actually. Scooby doing Kiss. I remember, oh, man, I remember that Archie did like a, a Kiss comic as well. Hmm. All right. A couple more animation things, then we'll get into the big stuff. <clears throat> one. I don't mind the live action Scooby Doo. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Whiffle, actually. 
Sid does a great job, no matter which character. I think he actually he didn't even play. Uh, he actually was himself for the, uh, for the recent uh, Scooby-Doo retrospective. Is there a Scooby-Doo Christmas special? There's some Scooby-Doo Christmas episodes, I think. I, I can't think of an official Christmas special. Uh, I don't think there is an official Christmas special. But uh, there are some episodes that would probably fit the bill. Ghastly Ghoulies. I remember Ghastly Ghoulies. They were fun. Very much so. I love Miyazaki. Uh, my name Totoro is probably my favorite, but uh, I've liked everything that I've seen by him. So I picked up the short-lived Fraggle Rock, the animated series. I don't, this was uh, only lasted for 13 episodes. And I'm a huge Fraggle Rock fan. And this is something that I am super stoked about. First, I got to show you this. So, see, this is Woody Woodpecker and Friends, the classic collection. So basically what this is, these are... Uh, the, these are the actual theatrical remasters for uh, for Woody Woodpecker and Friends. The there's something like seventy something seventy five or so ep, ep, you know theatrical shorts on here. Along with that, there was like a bunch of features, including a complete episode of the of the school of the Woody Woodpecker show that used to come on back in the day. Like everything, bumpers and everything was included. So I bought that at my local Canadian Tire room five or six years ago. Now. I've been looking for volume two since then. Hey, 13 Wolfman. And unfortunately, it went out of print. And the Canadian tower that I went to stopped selling films. So I went looking around for different places. And usually it was kind of expensive to, uh, to pick up, especially in my area. And you, you're kind of at the mercy of sellers. So today I found a brand new sealed copy of the Woodward Picker and Friends Classic Cartoon Collection, volume two. Now, everything else I'm going to show you is great stuff, but this, this is the highlight for me. This has been over six years search. It is 75 theatrical remastered Woody Woodpecker cartoons. I grew up watching Woody Woodpecker. I was a huge fan. It used to come on, on daily when I was like a little kid. Um, I would watch the Woody Woodpecker show. There's actually a full-length episode of the Woody Woodpecker show on here and two like Water Lance Pirates, the guy, pilots, the guy that did. Woody Woodpecker and a bunch of like other stuff. So aside from the 75 like uh, cartoons, wasn't it a great place to find? Like we, I had nothing, no home hardware that I went to ever sold movies, right? But Canadian Tire, I found so much there, like so much great stuff. But this one obviously wasn't Canadian Tire, but uh, you have no idea how excited I was to, to pick this up. Like it was... You know, I, I'm an animation fan. Like, I, I love animation, but I grew up with this. This this was my jam. This was my thing. Like, Scooby and all that. Woody Woodpecker was what was was my show. And uh, I almost don't want to take the wrapping off, even though I really want to watch it. Pretty, uh, not that great. Uh, it's it's watchable, but it it's not like the uh, like the cartoons. It's not it's not at all like cartoons. So I think I'm going to try to find a way to save this sticker. Um, I know that seems silly, but uh, <laughs> I just, I like the sticker. I, I, so maybe I'll just like kind of like open it from the side or something like that. Because I want to I keep the sticker as, it, as intact as possible. I know that's a silly thing and it's, and it's just a little, little minor detail. But... Uh, the other one had a sticker too, and I lost it, so I want the sticker. Anyway, sorry guys, I'm just really excited about the Woody Woodpecker one. So now I got some random stuff here, um, some different stuff, uh, some stuff I picked up just just because. That's what I was thinking of doing, cut open the end. But I hate where you know, kind of stick it on the case. That's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll stick it on the case because I I don't like leaving like it in the plastic. I know some people like to leave it in the plastic to make you know keep it. Oh, nice. Congratulations, JR. So I picked up the 4400, season three. Uh, now, have I seen the 4400? No, I haven't, actually. Have I seen season one and two? Nope. But you know what? This was a dollar. 
Actually, I haven't seen it, Tennessee. Um, I haven't seen the film yet. Uh, I've heard like mixed reviews on it. <clears throat> it's a Jim Jarmusch film, so don't go in expecting like horror. Uh, he, he's a very different director than that. And I think some people were expecting a kind of a loftier film than what they got. I hear it's a bit of a slow, slow burn, but maybe you can let me know on the next video how you found it. All right, so I also grabbed a, because uh, I, I realized I don't have enough documentaries in my collection. This one here, The Unexplained. So apparently this is an A&E a, a, a &E show. Ah, Third Wolfman liked it. And it has like, there's a few on here. We got The Vampire Myth, Poltergeist, Extreme Sacrifice, and Spontaneous Human Combustion. So there's, I guess, four episodes. Maybe this is a TV show that I haven't seen. Um, has anybody seen it? You know, like, is this, is this a TV show or something? I don't watch like a lot of A&E or, or actually television anymore. So uh, I'm guessing this is probably a TV show, like a bit like Unsolved or, or Unexplained Stuff. I got a few A&E things. I got a lot of History Channel stuff. You know those, when you get those multi-disc sets with those documentaries on them? I got a few of those because I love those. All right, so got those at random. Next one is coming out on Blu-ray, but I had to pick this up. This is a two-disc collector's edition. I remember wanting this back in the day, and I remember seeing this one, but I haven't owned it since, like, VHS. Uh, so uh, picked up the unrated director's cut of True Romance. I haven't completely cut the cord. Uh, I did once. Uh, that's not a, that, that's a lie because when I was in St. John's, I did because, and I will be completely honest with you right now. I ha I found a way to get Hulu in Canada when I was in St. John's, and it was great. We cut the cord completely. We loved it. Hulu is fantastic, by the way. You guys in the states that have Hulu, and you take and you. Don't take advantage and you don't realize you don't realize how good it is here uh, what you got we don't have anything like that here people say crave crave not half as good as hulu <laughs> don't let people tell you that it is um uh, but uh but yeah so we went on vacation and while we're on vacation we forgot to, to pay the hulu bill uh, usually it came out but i switched over my card that i used to use to pay it with uh, because in order to get it, you had to use an American card. So uh, I had a way to, to do that. So I switched over my card and didn't put the new card on, uh, the new American like kind of like card on there, and it lapsed. And then they had like new rules, and there was a new system to, to re-sign back up, and unfortunately, I couldn't get signed back up to Hulu. So... That was the time I cut the cord, ended up uncutting the cord afterwards. But not only for that reason, that basically because my my, uh, my my better half, her uh, you know her parents are in Morocco, so sometimes it's cheaper to call them on the home phone. And uh, home phone and internet and TV is actually cheaper to get than just like internet and home phone. So I'm going to open this up now because... What is it? That's actually a pretty cool like set you know, with a bunch of bonus features. I'm sure a lot of these here, maybe all of them. I'll be on the uh, I'll be on the Blu-ray, but you know sometimes all the features that are on the DVD. I know it's amazing, isn't it? You guys are so lucky. And Disney Plus don't always carry over to like the uh, to carry over to the blue. Okay, the next one is an odd choice, but I don't. I just remembered liking this movie back in the day, so I picked it up. I'm not gonna have to <laughs> I had to explain this too much, but it was a movie called The Cutting Edge. Well, with D.B. Sweeney, and he's uh, like, I think he was a hockey player, and he becomes like a, what is it, a, a figure skater or something like that to, for his hockey playing, like make a better hockey player or something, and there's a romance part to it. Anyway, I'm, I'm Canadian. I like hockey. I like the film back in the day. I picked it up. It was a dollar. So, also grabbed this one from my MGM collection. I actually didn't have this movie. I was really surprised, um, and that... Oh, she is, actually. Uh, Last Tango in Paris, the uncut, uncensored version. So I don't own this in, even in a cut, censored version. I have no... Uh, and it does actually have... I can't show you the booklet because there's nudity on the booklet and every page of the booklet. Um, but uh, I don't, don't have this movie. I, uh, I've never owned this film. Hey, 4K, welcome, dude. There's something... I, 
I was talking about something yesterday, and I can't remember whatever it was at the time. I said 4K Cinema HD would be proud, would would be proud to hear this, but I don't remember what it is. So it was on yesterday's video. I mentioned you. All right, and then there's this one that I haven't seen. I have no idea what it's about, but the girls look cute. Uh, that this is the how shallow is that? But beautiful creatures, and it's got Rachel Wise. Well, she's the girl in the Mummy. I I, I remember. I, and Susan Lynch, who is in stuff, because I don't remember what she's in. Waking the Divine. I think I've seen that. Hey, does. Last Hang in Paris is a is unique film. I, I liked it. I like I I enjoyed it back in the day. I'm gonna leave the horror stuff to last. You know, there's not a lot of horror stuff, and it's not exactly you know super big stuff, but I still I'll leave it to last. So next up is a box set that I picked up for a buck, and you know, it's one of those kind of like cheaper ones, especially back, you know, ones you used to be able to get around back in the day. Remember St. Clair Vision? They were like, kind of like, uh, cause they're kind of like Mill Creek and kind of like BCI. Um, I do actually, if I can find the book version movies that I got, now that's the same as with soundtracks. Oh, I, I was doing laser this yesterday. Critics Chase Video. Oh, really? Nice. See, it, it took me forever to find that. So St. Clair Vision was one of those companies that used to be around. Uh, they're, you know, they're California-based. Hey, Cinematech. Um, and they put out these sets. Uh, they put out like these, you know, these old, these cheapies. And they put out like these kind of like slim case ones. And they put out like these sets with these like slim, with the uh, slim case, with slim case in them. And I'll let you guys see. So this is the comedy, uh, Masters of Comedy, the Ultimate Collection, the slapstick uh, greats, um, which is a fun one. You know, it's, it's pretty much you know a lot of public domain stuff. But I uh, some of these I didn't have. Creature Choice Box of Doctor. Oh really? And this has some neat kind of cool. Just there's six volumes on here, and there's like the Gorilla with the Ritz Brothers, All Over Town with Olson and Johnson, uh, Ole Olson and Chick Johnson, if you remember that team. Uh, Private Snuffy Smith, uh, based on the popular comic strip. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that. Uh, Mr. Wise Guy, the East Side Kids. Oh, Leo Gorsi. Oh, the East Side Kids, the Dead End Kids, right? Yeah. My dad actually made me watch one of those movies once. I actually might like that one. Uh, they were pretty good. I like them when they're more serious than they got before they got comedic, though. But this one has Leo Gorsi in it, so I'll probably like it. Uh, before, like, Hans Hall took over. Dad, my dad gave me like uh, I'm not lying. My dad gave me like a history lesson on the uh, on the East Side Kids, Dead and Kids. He had a bunch of names anyway, um, but my dad knows all about them, and he's like a huge fan. Half Shot at Sunrise with Wheeler and Woolsey. I have no idea what that is. Africa Screams. That's that. Hey, Hammer, Hammer says it's going. Uh, check and Double Check, which is an Amos and Andy one, and it's uh, 76 minutes long. Speak Easily. Buster Keaton and Jimmy Durante, Utopia, which is on, you know, usually fun. Lauren Hardy, Road to Bali, Hope, you know Bob Hope and Ben Crosby, College, that's Buster Keaton, Generals Buster Keaton, Steamboat Junior, Bill Junior's Buster Keaton, then Three Stooges, Swing Parade of 1946. Well, it's not exactly Three Stooges, but they're in it. Jerk of All Trades is here, and uh, Classic Shorts, and the sixth vo like disc is Stan, basically Lauren Hardy shorts. So some pretty cool stuff. Dead and Kids, a Perry Buys, East Side Kids. So you're fat, you know the material, right? <clears throat> What's my favorite Keaton? Uh, oh God. I don't know. Uh, that That's the honest God's truth. Uh, What's the one on the train? What's the name of the one on the train? The General? Is that the General? Because I really like that. Who's on first? <clears throat> I'm asking you. So remember what we we're talking about yesterday. Remember the box, the general. So the, I remember the general, uh, like really well. I remember the. You know, I get Keaton and Lied mixed up sometimes. Uh, I think it's Lied that did the one with the house, uh, which is fantastic. Pacific guys, <laughs> remember yesterday we we're talking about three box sets. Somebody asked. Like which one of these three box sets 
Bogdanovich documentary. Yeah, is that is that the one? Uh, did Bogdanovich do that? Actually, I didn't know. Uh, it only hurts or something like that's called, right? Keaton's house lies the clock. Well, I know the clock one. That I, that's one of my favorite movies. Um, that that is a fantastic documentary. I did not know that. Hold one second. I'm not sure if you heard that background, but I did. Oh, that's okay. Bloody hell. Like I said, I was in the litter earlier and I moved some things around. <laughs> <clears throat> That would be, dude. I would be run. You would not see me like coming back here. I'd be running my ass upstairs if it was that big. That was that's moving stuff. All right. Yesterday we talked about uh, what what to get: the rec set, the critter set. Remember that, or the uh, or the other set, which was I think it's alive. And so today for a dollar I found the one I was talking about. Oh, thanks. Uh, Rec 3. You know, I gotta see, I haven't seen a lot of Fatty Arbuckle. I, I remember like re hearing about him and like the scandal and all that stuff and you know, his career went down. Uh, but uh, he used to do like a lot of stuff apparently. So this is the one I was talking about. This is the wedding one, Genesis. I'm pretty sure this is the wedding one. I hope it is. Uh, I'm gonna buy the set actually, but this was a dollar. So for a dollar, I'll probably watch this over Halloween sometime. I won't, probably won't be reviewing it until I get the set. Norman Wisdom. This sounds familiar, but honestly, can you name one of the films? So, next up is a comedy. <clears throat> and these are silly. But uh, I kind of have fun with these. Curse 1 to 4. <laughs> They're fun. They're really fun movies. Uh, oh, on the DVD, on the first disc... I think it's an Easter egg, but I know that there's uh, like a, an alternate ending for the uh, for Critters, and I'm pretty sure it's on the DVD as well. Actually, I, I know it is. So I picked up Hot Shots and Hot Shots Part Two because I didn't have either one of these films, and I remember liking these, uh, especially uh, which, which one had what second one had Rowan Atkinson? Which one had Rowan Atkinson? One of these had Rowan Atkinson. I know it did. Uh, I think it's the second one. But I, I like these. They're funny, cheesy, silly kind of movies. You know, you don't take them too seriously. So, I didn't have this one, so I picked it up. I haven't seen it in a long time. I remember the book. Oh, Rex, Rex is good. Yeah, Rex is fun. That's, yeah, that's the one. Thanks, Joey. I, I got Top Secret or Summer. Uh, that one actually has... Chris, uh, Peter Cushing in it. So I picked up 2010, the uh, the film. I actually like the book 2010 better than I like the book 2001. Uh, I, I just really enjoyed it. Now the film, I haven't seen it since, like for, for ages, so I don't remember how good it is. But it's got a great cast: Roy Schreider, John Lithgow, Helen Mirren, uh, Keir Dulia, of course. They should do. I like Hot Shots is one where I, I would be definitely okay with them making another Hot Shots film. They don't really need to reboot. Just just make a new one. Because, uh, you know, it's just fun, silly silly films. It's not like somebody's going to say, this is not like the other ones. But I was, talk I was talking to George earlier, and um, <laughs> my dad was, like, watching some movies. And uh, he just finished watching, like, he got his indicated movies come. Um, and uh, I was doing, you know when you do two conversations at once? And uh, then my dad said something. Well, hey, cat lover. I did kind of LOL to George when I met and said to my dad, uh, which, which actually it made no sense. Uh, but basically what happened was that my dad was watching his indicator films that he picked up. Oh, they can, actually. Um, I mean, like, because they're still fun, silly stuff. And, you know, actually he was supposed to have a doctor's appointment on the 13th uh, to talk about to get in for the surgery they set it back by a month it isn't this one is a snap case 
So he, he got the indicators and he and he watched Age of Consent, which is one of the ones he got, which is a lot of nude Helen Mirren. I read 2001 and 2010. I think it's 2061 is the next one, right? Uh, which I I don't remember well, but I I think I, I don't know if I finished it, but I know that I started it at one point. I think so. I could be wrong. I thought it was 2061, but I could be wrong. That's the third one, right? But anyway, picked it up. So yeah, my dad was watching was watching watching Age Consent and he uh Oh I didn't know there's three thousand one. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> and then uh he was like I got I'm gonna watch the second indicator movie but I'm upset because there's no naked Helen Mirren in it. Which I thought was funny at the time. It doesn't play as well now though. Especially when it took me so long to get that. Okay, so I picked up Clive Barker's Book of Blood. Uh, I don't know if I've seen this actually. This one might have passed me by. So who's in this one? Is this a Scottish film? No. Scottish screen emotions. Oh, Sophie Ward's in this. Uh, is this any good, guys? Uh, this one passed me by. Clive Barker's Book of Blood. I've never seen it. Not gonna lie. Not gonna pretend to say something I didn't see. I didn't see it, but I picked it up for a buck, so why not? Also, I will grab the Blu-ray special edition of this one down the road, but to uh, get it to watch, actually, So, no, I haven't read 3001. That's the one that I haven't read, for sure. I, I don't think I finished 2061. But, uh, so, but I haven't even got to, to, to 3001. So I picked up Single White Female. Yeah, that is a pretty hard thing, eh? Uh, you know, this is a regular edition. Um, I don't think I got the Blu-ray of this one. If I do, then I got both, both but... Anyway, why not? And I had this one, as you guys know, I showed this one yesterday, the Blu-ray, Blu so the laser disc of this one. So I figured to pick up the DVD. Uh, I do think, did this one get a Blu-ray release yet? Because I wouldn't mind, it's not a, a great film, but it's 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 kind of fun and I, and I do like it. And that is uh, Mary Riley, and I'm not sure fun's right for Mary Riley, but I, I enjoyed it. What a boring cover for this film, though. What an utterly boring, co bad cover. Like this is a major company that put this out, and you wouldn't th you would think that this was put out by by one of those like just straightforward like black companies, right? No, this is no, this is TriStar. This is Columbia TriStar, and this this is the best they could do. And if want to get better, this is how they did their special features. Not even lying. That how lazy is that? That is like super lazy. It is one of the worst covers. I will keep, even if I get a Blu-ray special edition of this one down the road, I will keep this because I want to own the worst cover. <laughs> exactly. It makes you not want to see the film. So next up, I had this one, the the rated edition of this one. This is not a good movie, by the way, but I, I kind of wanted to get it anyway. I've never owned the unrated copy, and this is a little bit of a slasher film called Cry Wolf. It actually has Bon Jovi in it, John Bon Jovi. Here's a movie with a much better cover. And not a great film. <laughs> Back in the early days, I guess Cinematech, right? This actually does, this movie does have special features. This is Rogue Pictures, so you know it's going to have some decent stuff. So what does it have? Anyway, I'm actually kind of curious. Tower Babel, the award-winning short that led to the filmmakers to cry wolf. How does his hair? I, was, I think he's got the long hair in this one. Or kind of, no, I think he's had his hair kind of shorter in this one. Did you like Cry Wolf? You got him. It's kind of a ridiculous premise. A lot has a, like to fall in place, like for the plan to work. Because, uh, okay, deleted scenes and enter the sinister set. Oh, and then go to extra, then more extras. <laughs> well, you can actually, that actually makes sense about that now. And there's another f short called Manual Labor, Wolf's Sheep and Shepherds, casting movie commentary by the filmmakers, and much more. So maybe this has some Easter eggs on it. So this is, yeah, it's the unrated cut. Just got to check the disc. 
Actually, yeah, really good. Um, I think I'm gonna have fun with it. I usually have fun with those type films. And last but not least is a flipper disc. Uh, I really wanted this one. I love the case. I don't think I got this one in Blu-ray. No, actually, no, I don't. Uh, I know it's out there in Blu-ray, but this case is gorgeous. I, I think it's anyway. And this is the last of these before we get talking about some other stuff. And that is H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. So just look at this cover. This is way that I love cover covers to do. Oh, this is the flavor. Just don't think, is it? No, this is actually. But this, I think I might have sent a set or something, but this is gorgeous. This cover is gorgeous. This is artwork. And uh, actually has a feature. Also, behind the scenes documentary, Time Machine, The Journey Back, hosted by Rod Taylor, featuring Alan, Alan Young, Whit Bissell, and others involved in the film. So there you go. It's got a 5.1 sound mix on it. So there. So that's my pickups for the day. Original artwork, definitely for the win. And I haven't been like going out and picking up anything for a while now. So uh, this was a big day for me. I also picked up like eight t-shirts and a hoodie. Uh, one of which I'm wearing right now. Hmm. Any category could do some amazing stuff for that. I was watching one of those. Oh, just uh, for this one, I just went to Walmart. Uh, this time of year, Walmart has some really good shirts. Uh, Walmart's actually un underrated for like a lot of the t-shirts the that they put out because they put out some really nice stuff. Uh, and, and, you know, it always surprises me. I'll go to the t-shirt section and I'll usually find like a few that I, that I want. Oh, that one actually does. Right there. Has the making of, the, of uh, on here as well. So that's actually kind of cool that they put that on there. Get a George Pal set. So I always check it out. Right now, around this time of year, you're, a lot of the WalMarts will have uh, will have like a uh, will have like horror shirts come in, and I picked up a few that that, that won't be showing on here until uh till only about Clutch Vinegar Syndrome. From what Vinegar, the money that I've sent Vinegar Syndrome's way. They should be sending me t-shirts. I'm just saying that right now. Oh, sorry, I missed one second. The Man Magician. Oh, nice. Somebody mentioned Billy the Kid, and I missed that comment. That's some Billy the Kid movie, The Kids. I don't remember that one. Oh, which one's that? I've seen a few Billy the Kid movies. I watched. I, I'm a I'm a big Young Guns fan. If you if you uh, if you remember those films, I thought. They, and also, by the way, John Bon Jovi in one of the young in the first Young movie, I think. Oh, <laughs> have a great night, Andy. Um, and in, enjoy your well day. Enjoy your day there, because it's different over there. I did, yep, yeah, Warlock, I, uh, that was in my, I think it was in my last video or my video before that, uh, I announced that I did pre-order the October package. I, I pre-ordered it like, I pre-ordered it on Friday. And uh, really, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I was talking to, uh, Indy also was excited about the, uh, he's, he's gone unfortunately, I was going to talk about the, uh, the more of the vinegar, vinegar syndrome stuff. Yeah, I was one of those kids that was, well, I wasn't a kid, I was like, in, I was a teenager, like in my late teens when it came out. <laughs> the Russ Meyer set. You always see it in the background, you're always like that Russ Meyer set. But it's, uh, yeah, I, I picked it up, so, uh, well, I pre ordered it. So now I gotta wait. I'm excited. So, what those movies. Really, you don't like Bon Jovi's music? We'll see. Are we the same? No, we're not. The same. Are we the same age? Uh, or close to? No, you're younger than me, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I grew up like listening to ACDC and Bon Jovi and people like that. Are you serious? 
I should have bought two of those. <laughs> Make some money. Um, then I would be buying all the bundles. I like Bon Jovi. What film should you start with the Bud Boddicker set? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, like, start from the beginning. I don't think there's any, like, right place to start because they're not connected, right? Like, they're, they're uh, you know, they use a lot the same actor. Uh, so, yeah, we're close to the same age. And you still don't like Bon Jovi? So, see. So, uh, was he in U571? He might have been, actually. He's done a lot of movies, actually. The kid. I don't know if I've, I don't remember the kid. I don't remember if I've seen the kid. Oh, it's recent. That's the thing. I haven't seen a lot of the more of the more recent films. Bon Jovi, Ma Ross Rat. Do you remember uh, Quiet Riot? Does anybody here remember? Maybe it's just me. Does anybody here remember Quiet Riot? Okay, quite right was a <laughs> okay. Um, so the other the uh, mental health was amazing. Man. ACDC. Yeah. Wait, birthday? It's Brian's birthday. Happy birthday, dude! But yeah, I loved Quiet Riot. I uh, my friend had the mental health album. I used to listen to it all the time. ACDC was my big band, though, the, when I was growing up. Like, ACDC, The Beatles, Rolling Stones, stuff. I, I, I've got a really eclectic taste in music. I like, uh, like soul music. I like jazz. Uh, birthday next Saturday. Happy early birthday. Randy Rhodes era. Randy Rhodes worked with, uh, with Ozzy a lot. I mean, like, he was the... Rest in peace, Randy Rhodes. Don't hate me for this, but I actually did like the the hair metal era, uh, which uh, I think is uh, like underrated. There's a lot of good hair metal out there. Not, not, I think there is anyway. But uh, but uh, bump. Uh, I got quiet there for a second. But yeah, if you like ACDC, you got to maximum overdrive. I like the first Bon Jovi, I like the early stuff, like Slipper and Wet. And, uh, do you know, originally, I, like, I wasn't a re really big Pink Floyd fan. Like, I took me a while to get into it. Oh, I like Lady Gaga. Like, super like Lady Gaga. You know your stuff, 13 Wolf, man. Do I like Guns N' Roses? Uh, I love Guns N' Roses, the early stuff. Well, anyway, I, well, I like the Aptive for Destruction. Uh, Spaghetti Incident was so-so. I, I really love Use Your Illusions 1 and 2. I think I like Use Your Illusions 1 better than Use Your Illusions 2, but I, I'm trying to remember which was on which. The one that had uh, their version of uh, Live and a Die was excellent. Like uh, That was pretty solid. Yeah, Eddie Money passed away. My dad was a huge fan of Eddie Money, actually. G and I were really great. You, you know, you got one of the greatest guitarists in the world there with, with Slash. But I'm also a big, like, punk fan as well, so I used to listen to a lot of punk. I'm not sure if anybody here listened to that. But, uh... You usually lose one. I think that's the one I had first, too. November Rain. You know, in college, a lot of the girls I dated were really into that song. Like, that was like a big song, November Rain. Um, and they would, like, listen to it all the time. Either that, or my other theory was that they dated some other dude before me that they couldn't get over, and he really liked November Rain, and I just dated every girl that that this guy dated. That's my other theory. That's that's a pretty weird theory. <laughs> but I'll go with the, I guess I'll go with that. It was a big one back at the time. I did listen to some Euro stuff. I'm uh, a bit of it. There's, but not a lot. Uh, there was a, and to be honest, like when I was when I was in high school, like when I was like 
but you guys, a lot of you guys weren't born but when I was in high school. Uh, I remember Haywire. Yeah, I do actually. Uh, I don't remember any of their songs, to be completely honest, but I remember the group. Uh, there's, there's a few like that that I remember. I remember Glass Tiger. I'm not sure if anybody here is Canadian, but if you're Canadian, there was a group called Glass Tiger. They were like really popular for like five minutes. Same with Duran Duran. Rush. <laughs> I, I do. I mean, like Rush are good. Like Getty Lee's is, is fantastic. Uh, and they do some amazing work. And, and it's very, and the thing is with, with Rush's stuff, uh, they're very like fantasy sci-fi oriented. If you've never listened to Rush, uh, you, you probably have and you haven't even realized that if you've seen the movie Heavy Metal, then, uh, then you've definitely listened to Rush. Uh, but uh, my uh, my cousin is like a huge Rush fan. I mean, like a soup, a big Rush fan, and I I like them too. But I used to like tease them, like I used to be like you know, I used to make fun of Rush all the time just to get under his uh, just to get under, just to get under his nerves. I'm like he's one of my favorite people in the world. Glass Tiger, yeah. Well, Elvis Costello, fantastic artist. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there's a uh, Clash of Champions comes on tonight. The best, like, mat. The best, the only match I'm actually, I'd actually be interested in is the, uh, is the women's match. The, I guess, the four horsewomen. Um, I like Super Tramp. Uh, I can't remember many of their songs, but I, I remember listening to them. There's a few artists like that. I'll be honest with you, uh, that I remember like, liking their stuff. AJ Styles on the pre-show. <laughs> Was his match on the pre-show? Like, like seriously? Cedric Alexander, right? If I remember correctly. Uh, who should be bigger than he is, but he's, his work on the mic isn't that great. So event, hopefully they get that worked out. Uh, okay, I'm going to say a group, and I'm probably the only guy that listened to them, <laughs> or, the, or that liked them, but does anybody remember The Offspring? Don't forget me when I'm gone. Yeah, that's uh, actually uh, Brian Adams does the, uh, does the does the vocals for that one. And don't even know it's Glass Tiger. That's he does like the uh, the kind of the refrain. <clears throat> Who's all the Osprey? All Osprey's music do not sound you. What you played? Are you a musician, Milwaukee? How are they? Are they like nice guys in, in person? Hey, Mark, welcome. Because um, yeah, I, I was a big fan, and people were like, "Oh, uh, were like, I like the Offspring's early work, but I don't like this Americana album. It's it's too mainstream." I'm I'm gonna go on record right now, right on camera. I love Offspring's Americana album. I really do. So, yeah, like they seem like kind of cool, um, and I do, and I did love the American album. I listened to it so much. Uh, I can, you, just so much. So you playing a band? Do you still play in a band or? Uh, my my dad actually was a musician. He played in bands for for like years, um, like doing different things. Usually was lead guitarist. Uh, later on, um, when he went back playing again after a while, he uh, he he moved over to bass. You know, did you know vocals and stuff like that. He did vocals and that, but uh, either lead or supporting vocals. He started as lead guitarist, went in bass and stuff like that. Oh, Tennessee, have a great evening there, dude. How do you feel about Pat Crash just? I mean, they're okay. I mean, I like some of their stuff. Great Big C, they're fun. I'm, that's Ellen, Ellen Doyle. The, but uh, their music can get a bit uh, Newfoundland. I used to. I collect vinyl, uh, and but my record player actually is uh, got is broken. I got to get a new record player. So I ha I've stopped. Like I've held off on the vinyl because I could have picked up some massively amazing vinyl today actually i was at a uh, at the place i was at the record store they had like tons of vinyl out there 
I am so jealous of you, man. A dream of mine, but I have no musical talent. Everybody else in my family, everybody else in my family does, like, uh, has musical talent. But, but, but me, I was the actor. That's what I did. I was up on stage all the time. Vinyl and Laserdisc, I collect them both, and I love them. Uh, I haven't collected vinyl in a while. Uh, the last ones I got, oh God, were a while back. There was, there was a few. There's a few at the record shop that I want to pick up, but I don't pick them up until uh, until I actually can play them. Because I was looking at some like some really nice soundtracks and stuff like that, and some great punk stuff. Um, oh God, what's that? Billy, you remember what's the name of the group again? Who, anybody here in the punk? Um, Billy Idol's group. Before, like before, uh, before you know, you did Billy Idol, before you became Billy Idol. What were they called again? Come on. So you're probably saying X. Uh, what's the Generation X, right? Yes, perfect Generation X. So I saw uh, like one or two of their albums like uh, show up recently. And uh, Cyberpunk, Cyber, <clears throat> Cyberpunk kind of refers to more of the sci-fi type thing. But I do like punk. I, I, I was big into punk. I like the Ramones a lot. Now, don't, the quick recommendation, if you're a fan of the Ramones and you haven't collected any of their stuff uh, ever, um, one thing I'm going to tell you right now, don't, like, go out and get their studio albums. Do not pick up their uh, their live stuff because it's horrible. Yes, yes, yes. I love Adam Ant as an actor and as a singer. And I'm Javid. You didn't you didn't know this, but Goody Two Shoes is actually uh, my Kevin Rowe, by the way. She's in the video Goody Two Shoes. But Goody Two Shoes is actually one of my favorite songs. And if I'm doing chores or stuff like that. One of the songs that I put on is Goody Two Shoes. Which, which video is Dan Doors in? Actually, I, I want to look that up. If you can find it, let me know. I can't believe we got into the music talk. I never know where it's going when, this, when I do these videos. <laughs> so that's a good thing, right, guys? Disturbed tradition sounds. I think I've heard that. Uh, hardcore and post punk. Yeah, that is a. You like ska, stuff like that? Rock Me Amadeus, yeah. uh, fan of Colleen, Dear Commissar. Um, yeah, I'm a huge Falco fan too. I actually took German one year in, uh, in high school because of uh, Falco. I'll, I'll check it out. I'm actually kind of curious. If nobody's heard of Falco, Falco was like was really good. Do I like Gang of Four? I don't remember them right now. I think I've heard them. I haven't heard the new Tool album, and I do like Tool. I like Alice in Chains, stuff like that. Now, Tool and Alice in Chains is more like my sister's era, but I used to, uh, I did listen to them a bit. But I used to listen to a lot of the early stuff. And, hey, welcome there, Wolf. Uh, I used to listen to like uh, like a lot of the pop stuff back in the day. So I was like, you know, as much as I listen to stuff like that, I'm not going to lie, I listen to Michael Jackson, I listen to Bruce Springsteen, I listen to Rick Springfield, I listen to all that stuff. System of Down, I like System of Down. Now, my uh, my better half is you know a few years younger than me. She's like seven or eight years younger than I am, and uh, she's like she's big into like the uh, like to like the, uh, the the dance club music, the party music, the uh, you know kind of the electric stuff, the the rave stuff, that that kind of stuff. A thriller freaked me out the first time Thriller premiered here in Canada. I'm not sure if. Oh, who's going to remember this? If any Canadian people around here, Warlock, if you're still here, you probably remember that. Um, there, it, it, Thriller premiered on Good Rockin' Tonight on a Friday night because that's when Good Rockin' Tonight came on. And uh, I remember the day that it premiered here in Canada. It had the Canadian premiere on Good Rockin' Tonight. I was in bed and because I had TV in my room. Good Rockin' Tonight came on late. Um, and it was before the new guy took over. So I think it was. 
was, was, who's, was what? I think Dave, Terry David Mulligan was the host of Rock Tony at that point, and Thriller came on, uh, and it kind of, and it freaked me out. I, I've never been into death metal. I've never got into that. Uh, and to be completely honest, I haven't like listened to enough of it uh, to be to know. Though I, when I was driving, when I, well, I wasn't driving, when I was getting rides from work, sometimes I there's this guy, and he seemed like kind of a really nice guy, and he seemed really quiet. And uh, I was like, oh, he's really shy and stuff like that. But whenever we get into the car, I'd like to go and he'd give me a ride home, it would be, it would be death metal we'd, 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 that he listened to. There's there, there's a lot of like Swedish metal, like death metal, right? There's, there is. But I'm not. I I got a feeling, and this is gonna sound horrible, that I, maybe I'm too old to get into death metal at this point. That is going to, to me, it's going to be like, oh my God, no, they're screaming too much. This is the guy that, you know, listened to punk and actually did a night, like, in a, in, in a punk band. There's some great bands there, Mark. Do you know what I couldn't get into? And uh, my... Uh, I'm just throwing something at you. It's not, not even remotely death metal or even any of the stuff we're talking about. My my uh, my stepmom was really into uh, stuff like Zam Fear. Remember that guy? The master of the pan flute? Uh, I, I, I will give it, I'll give it a shot. I've really, I really haven't tried any death metal or black metal actually. But I'll, I'll listen to some. See, I'll let you know what I think. But yeah... My uh, my stepmom's into into Zamfir, master of the pan. Is that uh, is that a uh, is that Jerry Warren? Is it Jerry Warren that did Frank Sinatra Island? Is that the one with uh, with John Carradine's face kind of like superimposed over a portion of it? Uh, Carolyn Monroe's in, in Goody Two Shoes. She's the uh, I think it's Carolyn Monroe. I think Carolyn Monroe is the. Uh, is the reporter in Adam Ant's video Goody Two Shoes? Let me look that up. I want I want to make sure I'm right here. Yep, it's Cal Monroe. So, you like you too? So, were you glad that uh, <laughs> when Apple put it, that g just gave you that, like, uh, that U2 album? <laughs> uh, like, that just randomly came out of nowhere? Oh, Frank Sinatra is what I'm thinking of. It's, it's an older movie. Did I watch Live Aid when it was on TV? I don't think I... I, I watched, like... I didn't watch all of it, uh, but I, th I remember watching, like, some of it on Much Music, like, you know, when there's some parts of it. Jerry Warren. Perfect. This is Jerry Warren one. Um, yeah, because I think uh, that John Carradine was, actually was dead at the time when Frank Island came out, uh, but they actually put him in the in the film. So, yeah, because Jerry Warren, you know, master of the cheapies, Jerry Warren. Uh, I actually got to look into some of his stuff. It's been ages. You know the last time I saw Frankenstein's Island, like in all seriousness? Um, there, she was, that was like, back in the VHS, and I don't mean like the recent, like in the more recent VHS days. I mean back in the EP era of VHS days. You know, they remember when you get those extended plays. I'm not sure if you're old enough to remember or not, but you get these extended plays, like really cheap VHS. You buy them for like, cheap at the time it's like five or ten bucks they'd be in a bin at a Kmart or something like that that's how long ago it's been since I've seen Frankenstein's Island like I love no I've seen a lot of his films I love his films but it's been ages and so you know what Cinematheque I would love to see like Vinegar Syndrome or some company like that actually do a really good set of uh, like a remaster set of Jerry Warren stuff because his stuff is super, like you're right it is super cheesy fun stuff Queen is like amazing oh yeah <laughs> Because Lord knows, didn't go into the films. I don't know where the where the budget went, but uh, if he had, did he have budgets even? 
You know, my dad was just mentioning that. Because I asked my dad if he was going to be picking up the uh, the new, you know, the bu the bundle for October for Vinegar Syndrome. And he wasn't in too many of the movies there. I don't think they're really my dad's era type thing. But uh, but they're my they're my era. They're the stuff that I grew up with. So, uh, like on Mass 25, you know, obviously. Uh, Berserker, I don't remember. But uh, the, then again, it did commit around. Hey, Brandon, welcome, man. You know what, Silver? I, I'll be honest with you. I haven't got into it as mu that much yet. Uh, I looked at a bit of it, but I want to. I'm waiting to like to really like honestly sit down and kind of like film festival the set. So I don't want to just like randomly go in and watch a movie here and a movie there. I want to go. I want to dive in. I like. I really want to dive into it, and I want to. I'm waiting for the time I can dive into it. So I haven't got to. Haven't got. I, I'm tempted. I get tempted every once in a while to go and, and to throw one on, but then I stop myself because I got like a plan for it. Oh, the even B-52s, of course, you know. Meatloaf. Which meatloaf? Was it Bad Out Hell? <laughs> oh, I remember that. Did you ever remember? <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, here we go, guys. I was going to ask this, actually. Anybody have a guess on what's coming out for those Black Friday titles? We know Tammy the T-Rex, and I actually told you the, the plot line to that yesterday. My first, you know, my first concert was? Gowan. With the spoons, like, uh, headlining. So, does anybody know who either Gowan or the Spoons are? <laughs> yeah, happy early birthday, by the way, for both of you guys. Uh, oh, if you're on here, but I'll say happy birthday to you here as well. But, well, but I'm sure you'll be having more important things on your birthday than coming on here. Uh, so, happy early birthday. Yeah, does anybody have any guesses on what's coming up for, for the Black Friday movies? The only one we know right now is Tammy and the T-Rex. We know there's another box set coming, though. <laughs> I still am angry with Green Day for killing off the uh, the rock bands. As soon as Green Day rock band came out, it just, that just killed it. I, I know they got uh, Vice Cammy 1 to 3, but I don't think... Uh, I really don't think that's going to... Maybe it's it. I don't think it is, though. Because, you know, they've kept quiet about it. Uh, and Vice Academy 1 to 3 is already known. We already know that one's coming. So I think Vice Academy 1 to 3 may be coming in the new year. I don't know, man. I think it'll be fun. You, Dude, have you seen some of the stuff that the companies put out and, they, and that they buy? <laughs> I don't think Hudson Oxen will be in November. I'll be really surprised if it is, actually. What? Rick Ocasek. Like seriously? That hits me. Um, I, I I I gotta look that up, guys. I'm a I'm a huge Rick Okay. I'm a huge Kyrie's fan. They were my favorite band growing up. Look, if you want to know my 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 favorite band, that Rick the Kyrie's were my favorite band, like hands down. Uh, Oh yeah. Crap. See, I'm I was a skinny little kid, scarecrow guy. And uh that wasn't easy when you're growing up, you move around places like that. Getting a lot of fights, you get teased, you gotta learn to fight and stuff. For real, unfortunately. Um so I met, I heard the cars and I remember like uh, like songs like Magic and uh, the one the only one that's not uh, done by Rick Ocasek which is Drive the that was actually the the other guy who was saying that one um, and you might think which is my favorite I'm dead so as a skinny little kid 
I remember seeing Rick Kasich on TV. And as you guys remember Rick Kasich, he's, he's like a skinny dude, like a small dude, and uh, wears these big glasses. And he was dating, I think he dated, later on he was dating like, like Paulina Porscova, so people like that. I know. He, was, he, had a, he used to date these really gorgeous women. And I was like, okay, Rick Kasich can get, you know, you know he's, he's a skinny dude. I know he's a musician and all, he's, but he can get all these like, these good looking girls. So, so, you know, maybe there's a chance for me. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe I don't, maybe it's not going to suck just, just being, just being a scarecrow of a person at the time. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah. And Rick Ocasek and the cars like became like a huge part of my life. And, uh, at a, and, and at a very, at one very dark period in my, in my life, he helped. He did actually. He did marry her. I'm not sure how long they stayed married, or if they were married for a long time or not, but uh, I know that he did for uh, for a period of time. But rest in peace, Rick Ocasek. You, you and your band uh, saved my life at one point. Dude, that's that's the truth. But let's not get too deep. We got deep enough. Uh, <laughs> just uh, you know, a uh, great band. You will be missed. Um, and it is so sad to know that, like, one of the great musicians, in my opinion, you know, has, uh, has passed away. Today, it's September the 15th. I see was how long he was married to her. Oh, I'm curious now. Did he marry her? Benjamin Orr was the guy that did the, wrote Drive, with that sang Drive. I remember, like, for a while, they went on, like, solo careers. I like Weezer. They married in 1989. Oh, they had... So they were married from 1989 till last year. They separated last year. So he was married to Porskova till last year. So they had a long marriage. Well, guys, I didn't mean to go a bit, get on a downer thing there, but uh, Blue Man Group. That I don't know a lot about. I I've seen them on TV. That's the ones that bank like where the you know, paint or something or have something blue on and bang drums or something I, I really don't know uh, like to be completely honest with you this one sticks I haven't heard sticks in a while he used to have an album he had the beautiful, beautiful album cover sticks did Devin Townsend I don't remember does anybody remember oh god uh, there's a song and I, oh god, I can't remember who sings it now but uh, the, it's just stuck in my head, uh, like randomly, because we're talking about music. Um, remember a song called "Beat So Lonely"? It was like a one-hit wonder type guy. I probably do. I probably would remember Devin Townsend if I if if I heard his music right now. But I. That would actually would make a great pile pick. I would love to see that. But it's got to be well done. It can't be like. It can't be like Bohemian Rhapsody, where where they where they say where they may come. Charlie Sexton, thank you. Um, but uh, where they you know they, they fictionalize half, half the movie. I gotta look him up. I I because it sounds familiar, but I don't remember. The Who is fantastic. I think I get tarred out on the Who after all the CSI shows. <laughs> like, it was like you know, let's get another CSI show. I haven't seen Rocky Man yet. I do want to see it though. Like, I I don't have anything against like Bohemian Rhapsody either. I just it just peeved me off a bit how inaccurate it was. Uh, with the you know the, the guy that played that played him, Remy Malik, it was he was incredible. He like he couldn't get a better person, I don't think, to play uh to play him. But uh, yeah, the, he was fantastic. It's just uh, I do know a, a bit of, about the about the group. Uh, 
so yeah, it was. That's exactly what it was. Thank you. Us, uh, kind of really safe, really stale. Um, so it did. It did like stick. Like, you know, there's there's a lot more. There's more you could be telling, and you're you're going. That is all. You saw who in concert? I would love to see the who in concert. I got a question. Is there a band or an artist out there that you wouldn't go to see, like, if you were paid? Like, if you were paid, you still wouldn't go to see this person. Is there somebody that you don't like that much? I'm really excited about the, about the Dolomite thing. Well, he's, he, well, he's playing, you know, he's playing Rudy Ray Moore and, like, the store behind, like, Dolomite. Uh, my guys. I don't mind Nickelback. I really don't. Taylor Swift. Oh. I... I uh, see. I'm not gonna lie, Joey. I, I do like Taylor Swift, and she's easy on the eyes too. So, but I do. I don't mind her music at all, actually. What is it about Nickelback that hate, people hate so much? I, I never got it. I mean, like they're okay. I mean, like they're they're not. J -Lo? really J Lo. Not even for just like seeing J Lo. Um, what's Roger Daltrey, Limp Biscuit, Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber. At, Justin Bieber's music is actually really uh, what's the word? I don't know. If Justin Bieber does. He seems like a bit of a dick in real life, but his music is very like if you're learning to sing, uh, the music that some of the songs that they try to get like to learn tone and and stuff is is Justin Bieber music because it's really easy to do. I love the lead singer of ACDC. You're talking about Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson's amazing. Oh, you mean he's tone deaf now, like over years. Actually, no, actually, Hanson, Warlock, in all seriousness, they grew up to be like a really good band. Uh, like, listen to the later Hanson stuff. Who's that crazy dude that's got guns and is hunting all the time? Um... <laughs> uh, yeah, Hanson turned into like like you would think like this was gonna be a one hit wonder, but their their stuff now is really great. That's like if you remember like the early early Tiffany stuff. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't. I. Uh, you can't pay me to see Tin Nugent. In a boxing ring with Tin Nugent? Yeah. <laughs> but listen to any of his music? Hell no. I never liked his music anyway. <laughs> what the guy's batshit crazy. Uh, <laughs> but no, I I just I didn't like his music either. I never got into it. Like, none of it. I mean, to be completely honest, even before he opened his mouth, like, as in to talk or anything like that, long before that, I was never, uh, never, like, into uh, to, to him. We wanted, wouldn't want to get Rick Roll in real life. No, seriously, guys. Hanson turned into, like, a really great band. Same with, like, when... Uh, when Tiffany started to do like a lot of the kind of like the jazzy soulful stuff that she did for a while, and she was uh, like we're two or three albums in, really great stuff. Seriously, check it out. I like. I'm not joking, dude. Uh, I know you're thinking like mm, Bob and like the Bobby stuff, but no, that their their sound really, really advanced. It's not at all what you think it's going to be. Uh, they put together, and it's really well put together. Who's Canadian? If someone didn't like Imagine Dragons? Uh, I don't listen a lot. I don't know a lot of other stuff. My kids will, though. I think Gene Sims is kind of... Well, yeah, in real life he is. Yeah, Hanson is a blues band nowadays. Slim Whip. Serious on a daily basis. No, nope. but uh, I don't mind it. You know, it was one of those earworm songs that like, kind of like stuck with you. But uh, it, it's actually, you know, it's actually, go back, go back and revisit it. Aside from the fact that it sticks within your head, it's actually a decent song. 
So that's the thing. People look at a lot of songs and, and they don't like that become hits, right? And, you know, it could be like the, the group might be young and they might be pretty or something like that. Or, uh, or it just be one that plays on the radio so much that, that you learn to hate it because it's just, you're just being deluged with it over and over again. But if you go back and you listen to some of those, those songs that, uh, that were like hits and like kind of either fizzled out or they just overplayed them so much that you just didn't want to hear anything from the band again, uh, that uh, like some of them, not all of them, like some of them obviously really suck. No, oh, we yeah, gotta, no, <laughs> I'm not listening to 90 Degrees. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but there's certain ones that are like are really way better constructed musically than, uh, than, than you'd imagine. Oom Pop is one of those songs actually that's actually better constructed than, than you would actually think it is. But, uh, is it a favorite of mine? No, not personally. But it is a better, it's, it's a much better constructed musical song than you'll, uh, than you think. There's more to it than that, but uh, can stand Bob Dylan really? I don't know that song. Uh, like my my uh, my youngest, he's like really into uh, into Milan. Some of you guys really don't like don't like pop. I can tell. <clears throat> but uh, like I told you, I was honest with you. I, I do love a lot of pop stuff. Lane. I don't know if I heard Lane. Right said Fred. Was there? Oh, I don't think anybody's gonna go, gonna ever think that Right said Fred did anything really deep. <laughs> That's one. I'm, I'm too sexy, right? That's all I remember. Uh, if they had other songs, I don't know. Uh, but that used to play, and this is one where, where I'm actually uh, guilty of it. Uh, that played at the at the bar so often when I was uh, when I was there, like going and dancing and stuff like that. That I was I was like, yeah, no, I'm done. I'm done with that. Uh, there's a group that played. Oh God, they sang. My Two Princes, right? Remember that? Big 90s song? Uh, great song. But I don't think I ever need to like listen to, listen to the stuff again. Train? But yeah, no. The, one hit one. Rico Suave. <laughs> I remember that song because the, I remember an interview that he did. And he was talking about like how how attractive he was, and how and how he was like a super ladies guy. And he and, he, and was in the interview. And it, does anybody else remember this? And he would talk, say, "I actually love that <laughs> ninja go ninja go thing." Uh, uh, he, he said, you know, "My mom packs, you know, packs my condoms for me in my in my suitcase." And I'm like, "Really, dude? Like, really? That's." That's the hill you're gonna tie on. <laughs> I <sighs> damn, there's a couple CDs I was gonna pick up today that I didn't grab. Uh, Synchronicity by the police. I used to have that one. I, I love that one, by the way. I'm a huge police guy. <laughs> the Dark Forces guy. <laughs> Does he... Oh no, now we know what happened to Rico Suave. Uh, Rico. Suave. I remember that song so. Oh God, you got it in my head now, guys. That's horrible. You know a song I hated that was really popular? I hated uh, Who Let the Dogs Out. And I hated uh, Cotton Eye Joe. They would play that so often. Crazy Frog. I remember Crazy Frog. I hated Cotton Eye Joe. I hated it. <laughs> you hear it? See, there, we agree with that one. Barbie. Hey, Barbie. Yes, Ken. <laughs> I remember that song, actually. The Macarena. Oh, which version? <laughs> There's so many versions of that. Tarzan Boy. I remember that one. Oh, 
I love Van Halen. Which, which era Van Halen are you? Uh... Oh, God, don't. That should not have been a hit. Watch me. Which, which, era, uh, which era of like uh, of Van Halen? Because for me, I, I really like the Dave Lee Roth years, but there is something to be said about the Sammy Hagar stuff. Uh, Love Comes Walking In is really good. Uh, like, Dave Lee Roth is my go-to. That that's that's my Van Halen. That's you know that's my era Van Halen. But I can't I cannot like discount the the Sammy Hagar stuff because uh, some of his stuff, especially the early Sammy Hagar Van Halen stuff, solid, really solid work. Now whoever the third guy was, I really didn't like him. But the first two guys, Sammy Hagar, like Dave Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar, those two I liked when it came to uh, when it came to Van Halen. I can't even remember the name of the third singer. Gary Sharon, is that his name? Uh, I honestly I couldn't tell you like a song he did uh, with uh, with the group. I was I was out of it by then though. So yeah, Dave Lee Roth was my be was my favorite era, but I do really really like uh, Love Comes Walking In. I think that's a classic song. Uh, So uh, if you have never heard of Love Comes Walking In, it's the best Sammy Hager Van Halen song. Sugar Ray. Didn't he became like a like I know he was a singer for like a short period of time, but didn't he become like a, like one of those guys on, on those like entertainment shows, or like one of those hosts type things? Journey. Journey became big. Glee made Journey famous again, man. I like the Who, I really do. I like the leather stuff. But uh, yeah, Glee brought them back. Yeah. What what Joey said actually is. Pretty true. The songs are more solid in the Dave Lee Roth era. The singing's a bit more solid with uh, in the Sammy Egger era of Van Halen. Unfortunately, Hager's singing was was strong and, and was good. He was good on his own, but uh, I don't think it always suited uh, Van Halen. I think he was better on his own. And there and. Uh, Although they were great separately, they weren't always the best mixed together. When they when they worked well, they worked amazing. But when they didn't work well, it was it was it was mediocre at best. <laughs> yeah, and he also can't drive fifty five guys, so never ask him to, because because he can do anything, but he can't do that. Oh, you eight one two is Sammy Hagar, right? That album. Well, I'm the Power Rangers guy, so yeah, you know, you know I like that. I love Power Rangers. I make no no bones about it. Power Rangers, awesome. You know, this is the first music oriented video that's ever been done on my channel. <laughs> my Shrek. No, that song was gonna be famous anyway. That was that was one of those. Oh, yes, right, because Danny Elfman was in Ango Bongo originally. Uh, you know, before he uh, he went over to, to, you know, make soundtracks and stuff like that. Yeah, Oh Yeah, Two is a great album, by the way. I really like that album. You met Van Morrison? I used to rollerblade. <laughs> Just random there. Someone mentioned rollerblade. I used to rollerblade. I really like the remake film too. And now they're doing it over again because the people that did the remake. Uh, <laughs> I like Talking Heads. Um, guys, my taste in music is eclectic. It's very eclectic. I'm not like, in all seriousness, not a joke. Uh, I listen to everything from Sam and Dave to ACDC to the Beatles. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I've got a. I've got a two Zappacosta, and I'm gonna. There, you want to be like, 
uh, want me to think you're super cool? Do you know who Zappa Costa is? I want to know if anybody here knows who Zappa Costa is. Dr. Demento. Remember Fish Heads? Zappa Costa. Nobody remembers them? Which, like it's later, Elfie Zappa Costa, but you, you usually went by Zappa Costa. Have I stumped the music people there? <laughs> For me, Zappa Costa was a Canadian artist, not Frank Zappa, that's a different person. Uh, yeah, Joey, you know, perfect. Um, but Zappa Costa was like a kind of late 80s, early 90s uh, artist. He probably became most famous on the Dirty Dancing soundtrack, actually, where the song he did, Overload, was, was pretty popular. Now, Zap Cost was, a, was an artist I used to really like and used to listen to a lot. I was doing journalism in, uh, in school. Check him out. It's not bad, actually. He went into, like, uh, like I think, musical theater afterwards, like, like kind of like off-Broadway productions and stuff like that. Um, but um, there's a song called like, Run Around. And I was, uh, I was supposed to be doing like the the radio like station at the at the at the college, and some guy was took over for me. And I was like in t in the cafeteria, and like the radio station would play all throughout the uh, all throughout the college. You know, it's a college radio station, uh, so they'd have it on there. And uh, my uh, one of the one of the guys in journalism, uh, kind of, it's a lighthearted dig at me at the time because I was dating. I was dating a few people, uh, played the song "Run Around," and said, "This, you know, this one's for Aaron. This is Aaron's song." <laughs> and they played Zappa Costa's "Run Around." If you ever listen to it, you'll you'll get you'll, you'll understand it a bit more. So there. If you want to find out more about my college years, listen to "Run Around." We should be lovers. Is fantastic. Uh, we should be lovers. Uh, there was oh God. There's so many good ones. Uh, I actually had like his best of. It, was, it wasn't easy to get to. My uh, my cousin got it for me. And, uh, and I, for the life of me, I can't find it right now. But yeah, and Run Around is not, not a great song, I'll be honest with you. Like, you may not get all, get all through it. But, uh, when I fall in love with it. When I fall in love against another good one, too. Am I familiar with who? I miss that one. Vanessa May or Lindsay Sterling. Volume three. Yeah, actually, I have heard this stuff. Tyra Zambai. Do I like... Yeah, I grew up in classical music. Uh, I listened to a lot of classical music when I was younger. Now, that being said, the first place I ever heard classical music, uh, to be completely honest with you, Brian, was in, uh, was in Looney Tunes, uh, like, like a lot of kids. Uh, We did. I used to listen. Of course, you know you, you, that's the first place heard opera. It's the first place heard classical music. Was like in uh, was in Looney Tunes because they used to use it a lot. And as I got older, uh, I, I would like I, there was like the uh, you know the theme song from the Lone Ranger, and I wanted to like learn more about this stuff. You like the spoons? I had a crush on that girl from the the spoons, and there's a story about. That concert that I can't tell on here, I don't know. Uh, one of these days, maybe I'll do like a, <laughs> a private video, a Patreon video, or something like that. Where I can tell stories that I can't tell on my YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, because <laughs> because no, because I'm not selling that one on here. Nope. <laughs> but I do like the spoons. I really love the music. Isn't it freaky of Frank Zappa with all the stuff that he did? It's probably best uh, remembered. Uh, oh, have <laughs> a great, great evening, Cinema Dave. I'm actually heading out pretty soon too myself. I'm going to head it out, but head it upstairs to get some tea because I am totally out of it. 
the secret spoon stream oh god i probably won't do that <laughs> but it's, it's just something that stuck with me it is stuck with me but yeah frank zappa is probably still going to be remembered uh for uh you know for things like uh you know valley girl uh you know, he's probably gonna remember for valley girl um uh, you know no matter everything he's done that that's gonna be his thing that's, that's gonna be the one thing he's remembered for and he's done a ton of a ton of stuff Oh, you watching? You watching the, the pay per view? Has it been good? Like, I, I'll be honest, Cinematech. I've been way more into the uh, AEW stuff recently, uh, and I find their the wrestling better. Like, to be completely honest. Zappa was fantastic. As much as I like Al Gore and the stuff he's done doing for environment, uh, I was a huge not Tipper Gore fan because she she went after my cartoons, man. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking forward for the TNT show to start. I'm not sure where it's going to play here in, in Canada. Did you hear the rumor? For anybody that likes wrestling, I'm going to throw this out there. Uh, did, did anybody hear the rumor that? TNA could buy ROH. Have you heard that? That's been floating around. I want to see if anybody like that actually likes wrestling is gonna. Yeah. Because there was a time like people forget this and, and like the kind of kind of pass it off but there's a time when tna was a really great show and they had some of the, the some of the best wrestlers in wrestling that that you could see but nobody was watching it oh be, well recently became aware bill, bill hicks was a fantastic comedian um you're wearing kenny Meg's. nice i need a kenny Meg shirt i really do i don't have any wrestling shirts anymore I used to have a DX shirt with those two words on the back of it that you all know. Oh, have a great evening there, George. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, it was somebody took my shirt and I don't have it anymore. See, that was a, a troubling time for me. Like they had some really great stuff during that Hogan Bischoff era, and they had some really bad stuff during that Hogan Bischoff era. Comedians, oh, George Carlin's my favorite. Uh, I really liked like the early Eddie Murphy stuff, Robin Williams. Um, I like good comedy. I like good comedians. What I consider good, I think comedy's subjective. Uh, there's some I don't like. Uh, yeah, I don't like Bill Burr. I find that he's, he's he tries too hard to to be edgy and, and, and he's not. Uh, it's 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 fake edgy. And uh, same thing with like uh, recent Dave Chappelle stuff. I think that he see. I don't. I mean, I, I think he try. I mean, you you can. I think the thing is, it comes off. It comes off fake. That's the problem. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't like. I don't buy it. Really? I then I probably wouldn't like his podcast either. Um, I just. I, I don't. I same. I love Richard Pryor. Harmondale is underrated, actually. A lot of people talk about Harmondale and they just think of it. 
Like, remember, he did the glove thing. But no, I'm, I, I don't like Bill Burr. Uh, I, I used to love Dave Chappelle's show, but I was never big on his stand-up. But when he came back, it wasn't the greatest. And it seemed like he just, like, charged towards, like, kind of the edgelord thing. Like, I, I, not, I don't mean, like, in, even in a political way, but in, like, a, the fact that he was just, he just wanted to, like, it's like the talent wasn't there so much so that you know he used the crutch and there's great comedians that I I don't I think I think the new Chappelle sense is horrible it's like uh, it's like a crutch uh like look at uh what's his name Australian comedian who's who's just as like you know just as like harsh with his words and talk and stuff like that and can be pretty like like divisive in, in certain ways um, oh God, he got his show now. Jim Jeffries, right? He's good. Like, like Jim Jeffries is really freaking good. Um, I, you know, I don't always agree with what with Jim Jeffries and stuff, but uh, is there's the difference. Like, Chappelle comes off as like he's trying something to get you know to to like really kind of like to get somewhere, but Jim Jeffries comes off like you know, same as same as. I, and, I, and this is like a big compliment, same as George Carlin did for me. And uh, neither one, I'm like, I, I lost like a few viewers because when I said I didn't like Dave Chappelle, sorry, I just don't like his music now. I used to like the Dave Chappelle show. Um, but, you know, that I'm not going to lie and pretend <laughs> like stuff I didn't like. Um, Norm MacDonald's hilarious. Dimitri Martin, yes, definitely. Hannibal Burris, I don't know a lot about. Jeffrey, Jeffrey's just like he's, he's fun like yeah and he'll say he will say anything oh definitely oh we got a wrestling conversation going here that they didn't even see but yeah when it comes to comedy guys though it really it's it's subjective like um, some 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 I like better than others and and that's the thing. I, just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's not good. It just means that I don't like it. <laughs> um, and there's no reason other than, like, I find some things funny and I find other things not funny. Um, and certain jokes just resonate with me. I can watch Carolyn any day of the week, even his old stuff. Stephen Wright I love. New Japan, yes. Watch New Japan Wrestling. Watch AEW. That's, that's the stuff. That's the good stuff. Look at really good. Rodney Dangerfield's... Rodney Dangerfield is one of those comedians that, that was so good. Other comedians would watch him. And uh, and they would say, you know, they'd be looking at his stuff. Sam Kinison, too. Did a lot of great stuff. Oh, man, I would kill to have Punk debut there. I don't think you will, though. Now, the G1 tournament is, is an, actually is a fantastic way to see, like, a lot of, like, New Japan. Not just New Japan wrestlers, but some great wrestlers as well. Are you really? See, Punk has been out of the scene for a while. Um, but I like Punk. I really do. You know who I really like, though? AJ Lee. Uh, I really like AJ Lee. And, uh, okay, so just me, but I have a huge friggin' crush on AJ Lee. She is, like, way up on, on that Google Doc list, which I haven't mentioned Google Docs in a while, but she's way up there on the Google Doc list. You miss some good stuff, and you and you and you luckily you miss some really good bad stuff. Punk was good. Punk could talk. He can wrestle and he can talk. I don't think he's the best in the world like he thinks thinks he is. <laughs> hey Trini, uh, but uh, I do think he's a fantastic wrestler, and he has a great character. And the best best theme song out there called a personality. Now, Hogan is stuck with WWE for, for life. I'll be disappointed if Punk goes back to WWE. you got to be a good talker. I mean, like, uh, it's, you know, be able to do the story in the ring. But you got to, hey, Brian, you got to be a good talker as well. 
And the thing is, right now in the WWE, everything is is so well. In real life, I'm not sure. If I've heard, he can be at times, but Punk's a great wrestler. That's the thing. But he knows it, uh, and he's married to AJ Lee. So turn a few with Jericho. Oh yeah, because Jericho Jericho's incredible. Samoa Joe could be the greatest heel, but he won't be as long as he's with the uh, WWE. Look at a. Uh, Now look at uh, look at Bully Ray, like part of like the Dudley Boys, you know, Bully Ray Dudley. Um, when he was in TNA, they did this whole storyline. Some people liked it, some people didn't. I loved it actually. Called Aces and Eights, and Bully Ray went from being like you know, a tag team guy, to being like the top heel on on their show, and man, did he 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 killed it like. He, they shoved like things in his way that would have sunk any other wrestler. Uh, they, they, they had him do a romance with Brooke Hogan. I'm not joking. If you've missed out on this, Bully Ray had to do a romance with, with Brooke Hogan on, on TNA. Um, but he kept it going. He kept, and he turned in one of the best heel performances that I'd seen. He, he's a great talker. He, I'm not sure if he's still, but he used, he used to date like uh, Velvet Sky. I th I'm not sure if they're still together, but they were like a couple. Yep, Velvet Sky is with, you know, if you ever know the beautiful people of Velvet Sky and Angie in Love. That was a good one. I got a little bit of teary eyed. And that was a great match. That's the thing. That's what you don't see a lot, unfortunately, in WWE right now. Is like you need a match that can tell a story, a match that that can really tell a story, and uh, you can flip or you can do a mat. You can have a match or you can do your holds or your big move or come down type of thing. But if you can't tell a story in that ring, if you can't like, and and uh, people don't sometimes don't get like there's a psychology behind wrestling. And uh, behind behind the way they work the matches, a good wrestler can can actually tell a really decent story and keep you enthralled into uh, into that match. And it can have you know it can have some big spots, it can have some rest holds, it can have a lot there. But if, if it's a really good wrestling, uh, it would uh, you know it'll show. And like the Cody Rhodes Dustin, you know Cody Rhodes Dustin Rhodes match, great storytelling. Owens was great with storytelling too. But he uh, he didn't really care because he uh, uh, Owen Owen Hart didn't want to be a wrestler. Kevin Owens, there's a guy that's a good story. Uh, do I? Oh, they said uh, do I box? I was gonna say not anymore. Uh, <laughs> I said I I didn't I don't remember I, I don't know if I've seen you know, Owen Shane match. I think I did actually. Uh, the Owen Shane story has been going on for too long. It, it's nuts. I mean you you, you can't. I mean it, it it's killing it. Definitely, I mean, like Daz, like right now, uh, in October, uh, AEW, they're having a TV show on TNT. It's the first time wrestling has been on Turner since WCW closed down, uh, which is obviously, it's, it's a massive deal. Uh, they'll be doing like pay-per-views and stuff as well. If you can find a way to check out like Double or Nothing, uh, that was a, a really good show. Uh, don't have cable. There's other ways to find it, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, there's also like, you can also find some of the shows, some of their stuff on, uh, God, what, what's the name of it, guys? Is, this, is it Bleacher Report? Somewhere like that? Uh, but yeah, you'll, uh, trust me, I think you'll like it. If you're a wrestling fan, you'll like it. Like of actual wrestling. I have to ask a question, since I got some wrestling fans here. What's your thoughts on, and I want to know this, Orange Cassidy? Yeah, I think it's going to be in Bleach Report Live. Well, I think the pay-per-views were, I know that much. Yes. See? Thank you. We, we definitely have the same mindset, Joey. Then. Um, Orange Cassidy is awesome. Uh, 
That's the guy. That's amazing wrestler. And a lot of people kind of like, because he has the gimmick, the hands in the pocket, kind of lethargic type of gimmick. The, I don't, it, it's fun. And the neat thing about it is that if you've ever seen a guy, like, he's really good. Oh, Vince would hate him. Um, he's a really great wrestler, too. And to be honest, you know, just you know, when he's got his hands in his pockets and he's actually kind of like doing the wrestling moves and jumping over, you know, the ropes and stuff like that with his hands still in his pockets. Uh, yeah, that takes skill. That takes major skill, what he does. Uh, and I can see it like coming on basically where kind of like a storyline where, you know, where he's doing this and he's doing this and like he gets to a point where, you know, he's going up against somebody where he just really has to go. And he really goes. Bring back Lex Luger. Dude, last time I saw Lex Luger, he was... Well, Lex Luger's never been a great wrestler. Uh, but, uh... He was in bad shape last time I saw him, actually. I still hold. Think Jungle Boy is going to be a big superstar? It's a sad that, unfortunately, his, his dad's not going to be around to see him. I loved Cup Rock. It was it's a, not a great show. Uh, it it wasn't a the it, it, they tried something different. I mean, did it did it work? Sometimes, sometimes it's it's hilarious. I mean, like watch it. It's fun. Some people consider it like TV that like canceled too soon. TV too good for TV type of stuff. Uh, I would really, I haven't seen Cop Rock since, since it came on TV. I never watched it afterwards. But uh, I did watch it back in the day and I, I kind of got a kick out of it. But us people were like really ragged on that show a lot. And I'm surprised people remember it actually. It's better than you think actually. Uh, like just like to take a look into it. It's actually a better show than, than it seems to be. But it did bomb hard. But I think it was one of those shows that was kind of ahead of its time, too. It could, didn't find its right audience. I know how you feel, Charles. Uh, because, but at the end of the day, well, that's not abrasive, dude. You're giving your opinion. That, that's, that's the truth. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I can't just blame him. Uh She was an adult, and uh, yeah, bad situation. We all miss Miss Elizabeth. She was fantastic. <laughs> Six foot two, make you the face of the company. See, I'm going to say something here that's going to be a little, that's going to be controversial. It's going to be really controversial. Are you ready? Roman Reigns isn't bad. Not, not even remotely. But you know what's bad? Yeah, I know, but it's hard. I understand it's hard. Like once, once the once that happens, it's it's hard to separate it. Uh, yeah, he doesn't work for this. I mean, like somebody said, I think the Rome Reigns wouldn't work in the Attitude Era. I think Rome Reigns would be better in the Attitude Era because that's what you need. Uh, you, that that type, the type of personality that he would have in the Attitude Era, which he doesn't have here, and he has never been able to have here, uh, will work better in the Attitude Era. His limited move set, actually, uh, would work better with the more flashy storylines of the Attitude Era. They don't work in in today's wrestling. They don't they don't work well in the WWE. It it's really really shown off. It, and and the thing is. That shows off a lot, unfortunately, because because the storylines and because like the work great stuff is around is you know exactly everything's micromanaged, everything's polished and, and shiny and stuff. Because of that, people that would normally be you know be big stars uh, that would have been in another era would be like huge. Going Rome Reigns would be a guy going up against Austin, that type of thing. That's the type of stuff that he would have done. But right now, it's it's just it's just not good. It's just really not good. Now, the Attitude Era didn't have the best wrestling. It, no, that's a lie. The Attitude Era didn't have the best wrestling in WWE. Go watch some WCW wrestling during that same era. They did some great stuff, especially on the, on the undercard. 
Well, that's my, you know, we got, we went from music to wrestling. My God, we went everywhere tonight. It's kind of weird because, like, I wouldn't say everything but the main events were unwatchable. Now, Attitude Era, like, you, you said, Charles just said three letters there, ECW. And there would be no Attitude Era if ECW wasn't around first. Um, WCW just put off, like, some some amazing stuff, especially. WCW was, was the reverse. Basically, WCW would have, like, a great undercard. And, and like, you know, leading up. And then the, then the main event match would suck ass. That, that's, you know, that's the truth. The main event, main event matches, WCW, rarely, rarely great matches. Uh, cause, usually because they had Hogan in them. Um, and, and some, I don't know, Dennis Rob, something like that. <laughs> Carl Malone. Uh, but a lot of them really sucked. ECW is, but ECW is good. Without ECW, there would be no WWF right now because it wouldn't WWE, I guess now, because the stuff that they did was, was nuts. Uh, like before the the big cruiserweight divisions was in WCW, it was in ECW. Is that the one by uh, by RD by RD Reynolds or something like that? I think because the guy did wrestle crap, or is that are you talking about the other book? Because I know there's a book by the guy that wrestled crap. Because I got the wrestled crap book here, actually. I used to actually go on that website a lot. Is this still a website? Uh, Brian Alvarez, thanks. Uh, is that some website still around? I haven't been there in ages, if it is. Actually, I listened to their podcast a couple of times, and a couple of times he just peeved me off. Uh, they had like a lot of hate towards TNA, and, that, and I was a big TNA fan at the time. So I just stopped well, like like looking at them at all. But they were so funny. They were so good. Paul E. was genius. Uh, he still is. Uh, Paul Heyman is still great. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, they put Paul Heyman in at Raw. They put Eric Bischoff into uh, into SmackDown. NXT, that's Triple H's baby. Uh, you know, they just recently canceled 205 Live, which I'm sure because NXT is going to two hours, they're going to like just kind of like put those two shows really together. You're going to get NXT with a lot of like 205 Live guys on there. Just mark my words on that one. That's well, that's where I listened to them last. Wrestling Observer. They actually did a really good one. They did like a a uh, a review of the uh, of the AEW show. Oh yeah, NXT comes to TV. Is it next week? Is it, it's next week, right? Cause, Cause I know it's in September. I think it's next next Wednesday. Cause they start like two weeks. Maybe it's the week or one Wednesday after. They start two weeks before uh, before uh, AEW starts. Like Vince has said, <laughs> Nathan Jones, that you know that he's, Vince and you know Triple H and all those guys have said that you know NXT, you know AEW is not a threat. They don't consider AEW at all. You know it's not a big thing, not a big deal, right? But at the end of the day, what did they do? They they went and they took their NXT show and they put it on Wednesday nights because because of this non threat because you know because because of this non threat. Nathan, I remember Nathan Jones. He was not a good wrestler, man. Uh, he was in a company. Oh God, I used to watch pay. I used to, anytime there's a pay per view of a wrestler wrestling show would come on back in the day, I would watch it. Like it didn't matter what the company was. NXT was good where it is. Like obviously they think that obviously whether you, th I think or you think AEW is a threat or whatnot. Uh, they want to kill it fast uh, because Vince does need to step. I don't know if his mind's gone, but Vince does need to step down. And I do like the NXV and NXT pay per view. I like the NXT show, uh, but I won't pick it over. If I if I if they're, if WWE are going to make me choose between am I going to watch AEW live or I'm going to watch NXT live, I will watch NXT on WWE the next day. I don't have the channel anymore. I'll wait. I'll, I'll wait to watch it in reruns, but I'll give my viewership to the new company first, and I watch NXT after. 
because they put it, it was it was their thing. They they didn't have to put it up. They could have put it on another night. They didn't have to put it right up against AEW. But they did that. Do you want to make me choose? Okay, WWE. I'm not, uh, I love NXT. I think that the wrestling is fantastic. It's the best that you got. But you know what? Because you did this kind of dick move, I'm not going to watch your show live. I'm going to wait to watch it later. I will watch AW Live because I want to see something different and I know the wrestlers are good. There's a lot of heart put behind it. That being said, NXT was an hour-long show. It was a good hour-long show. And it was on the WWE Network. Their pay-per-views were excellent. They're going to two hours. They're becoming another brand. NXT is now a brand. Before, NXT was thought of kind of like... Uh, are you serious? And that makes me that makes me worry that NXT is going to turn into another SmackDown or, or just another. That's that's the sad part. I think that's going to just become another. Uh, it's going to be more homogenized what, because it's going to be going for. Whereas like where it's at now. It didn't have to go for like a. It didn't have to go for like a, a mainstream audience, right? It could go for like a, a wrestling enthusiast, a pure wrestling one. Oh God. Yeah, I, I'm glad you're telling me this because I'm not watching the show. I'm so not watching the show. Uh, but oh God, guys, my voice is going. <clears throat> I'll check the wrestling results later on. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know this stuff, though. Because <sighs> I guess they're doing the Harper Rowan thing again. Yay. Uh, I'd be more excited, but uh, but the problem is WWE just, just, they're not great with doing tag team wrestling. The user tag team division to make uh yeah but not in wwe's not unfortunately uh like before i love this stuff or like previously um the tag team in wwe is you often is used to like promote they'll put like singles guys together uh, and often put guys together oh that don't like each other uh, so that they can eventually feud over a different belt and the tag team belt just becomes like an afterthought and that's always bugged me anyway my name's aaron Thank you for joining me today for this very long video. For those people that stayed around, thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. And for those of you that had to go out early, I completely understand. We went at 123 minutes long. I am Aaron. This is the movie library. You guys are the movie club. You guys are awesome. We did a really different video tonight. We we started out with my with my haul, but then we got into talking about music. We did a really long talk on music. Then we talked a little bit about stand-up comedy, and a lot of people left. Because, because I guess we have different comedy tastes, <laughs> and um, and then we did wrestling talk, which I had a real blast with. So, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great evening there, and I will see you next time. It is time for tea.